What's going on guys, VVP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're gonna to go into a little bit of advanced settings on a Raspberry Pi build. So this basically could work with all of my bar tops. If you have a bar top for me or any Raspberry Pi build from me, this will work. Um, but it also could work for anybody with a Raspberry Pi. The big thing I do highly suggest, number one, that you do need is a keyboard. Um, for me, on my builds, I do have the buttons already manually set, so you don't really need a keyboard, but it's always good to have a keyboard handy. Always look for a USB keyboard. It could be wireless. You basically plug this into your Raspberry Pi. So that's definitely the first thing that you do need. You do need a keyboard. I highly suggest you do get it. Um, to start off on this one, we're gonna do basically the aspect ratio change. So a lot of my customers and on my bar tops and a lot of my builds, I set the screen on the game to be stretched to a 16 by nine. Uh, so there are some people that do notice that it is more blocky. Um, they're not really a fan of it. So I'll show you real quick what I mean and, and what 16 by nine is and all that. So it's basically the aspect ratio. Um, some systems already have full screen stretch, which is 16 by nine full screen. Um, other systems, like for example, the Game Boy, it's kind of lower, it's a four by three. So you'll see like the black bars on the side. So we're gonna load up real quick one game just to show you. Again, I have all these set already to 16 by nine. Uh, to me, you having a 22 inch screen like this, it's, a, it's not a small screen, it's a medium sized screen. But to me on this type of scenario with an arcade cabinet, you might as well stretch the screen. So this right here, for example, is a stretched screen. So you can kind of see some people do think that it is blocky. They do say that, you know, the, it doesn't look correct and all that. So again, this is a Game Boy game. So if you remember the Game Boy, it was a very small screen. And as you can see right now, we are playing on stretch. So the, it's the entire screen. It literally filled up the entire screen and such. So yes, you do see it. Um, I mean, again, for me on a bar top situation, I definitely suggest leaving it as 16 by nine. Uh, I'll go through the steps real quick as far as how to change it. So on my build and most Raspberry Pi builds, they do use a system called RetroArch. So the first thing that we're gonna do is that we have to go everything within RetroArch. So we have to find RetroArch. So you should see a settings tab. For me, it's a track mode. You'll go into settings and then you'll basically look for, depending on how yours is, this is my kind of layout, this is my front end, but basically you're gonna look for RetroArch with the little bug. So you're gonna load up RetroArch and again, you could do this with a keyboard and such. So this is the main menu for RetroArch. And again, I'm gonna show you how to get into the video. So basically we're gonna go down into settings. On my arcade builds, um, it's really to, it, there's, there's really two buttons you need to know, which is enter and back. So on these arcade builds that I build, button four is enter and button five is back. It's a little bit different from the actual front end, whereas button one is enter and button two is back. On RetroArx menu, it's flip. So button four is enter, button five is back. So we're gonna go into settings, enter. We're gonna go into video, enter. And we're gonna look for this right here, which is aspect ratio. Again, I have this set to 16 by nine. You could go back and go into core provided. Core provided is already like, you know, the system basically automatically will go to what that game specifically was set to. So those are the main two. You do have a lot more options. I wouldn't do any of these besides a 16 by nine or core provided. Once you do select it, you go back with button five, you go back with button five, and then you go into configurations. You enter, and then you save current configurations. Before we test, just so you have it now, you could see it, as RetroArch only uses, I mean, on my system, it uses 80% of the systems um, within it. So the setting I did right now, it saved across about 80%. Some systems did not save because it doesn't use RetroArch correctly. Um, so before we go into the next part, it's always a good thing to know what our combination is or our button on the keyboard is to access in-game RetroArch. So real quick, we're gonna go back. I'm gonna go into settings. I'm gonna go into input and I'm gonna go into input hotkey binds, okay? This basically is all the hotkey binds and such for like load and save. That's how I have my load and save state set. The big thing that you kinda of wanna look for on this menu is what is enable hotkey set to. So this mine is set to an arcade button. So my button 13 is my shift. 
And the last thing you do want to see is your menu toggle. So on mine, it's button one, which Zinmo is there's a zero, one, two, three. So it's button one, which is really button two. And here you can see for your keyboard users what key it is for your keyboard, which is F1. So sometimes, as again, if you do have the keyboard, um, basically I'll show you what I mean when I get into it, but you could use F1, but also some settings do need the enable hotkey. So you might have to do a button combination such as like button one and F1. So whatever it is here on yours, you just gotta keep that in mind, okay? We're gonna go back. Basically I'm gonna exit because we already saved the configuration. And now I'm gonna go back into that game, which again, mine was a Game Boy game. So I'm gonna go into handhelds just to compare what the 16 by nine and basically what the core provided looks like. So again, the setting that we just changed, it should map to this. And as you can see, yes, it did. So this is a core provided, as you can see, you do see the black bars. And again, some people like this better. Um, it's not stretched, it's not blocky, but in all honesty with these retro games, I mean, eight bit, 16 bit games, it's gonna be blocky. Um, so just keep that in mind. For me, I personally am not a fan of this because you see the black bars, but again, everybody has their own personal opinion. Now, for example, if you just did your game and it didn't stretch, that might mean that you have to go into RetroArch menu here specifically, um, which I'll actually show you real quick on my arcade as some of the arcades don't really translate correctly with it. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go into my arcade menu. And the most common one that people do notice the stretch is with Street Fighter. So I'm gonna go into MAME and I'm just gonna load up Street Fighter. Street Fighter, a lot of people do notice Street Fighter as stretched, they don't like it. Again, for me personally, I always like it 16 by nine. Might as well utilize the full screen. So this right now is set to full screen. So as you can see, the menu that we just did, that retro arc thing that we just did, it did not work on this specific arcade game. Within arcade, there's many uh, emulators. This one right here is running Final Burn Alpha. So as you can see, this is 16 by nine stretched. So we'll get a little bit of a game going just to show you it. Again, this is stretched full screen, no black bars on it and such. Again, for me, it's an arcade cabinet, it's 22 inch screen, so you might as well, you know, enjoy it like that. Now, for example, this is a system that it did not go through which retro arc. So now we need to know our, the, the keys that we took down before in the settings menu for hotkey and menu. Now we need to know what that is. So here, if you do have your keyboard, you could press F1, my keyboard is not connected. For me and my build, shift, and again, button two, will bring up this quick menu guide that you see here. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go back. Once you're inside of this, we're gonna go back, so button five. And now it looks like the menu that we were in before. We go to settings, I'm gonna go to video, and right here to aspect ratio, I'm gonna set this to core provided. We're gonna go back, we're gonna go back, configurations, save current configurations. Me doing this now, any game utilizing this specific emulator, which again, my Street Fighter is using the Final Burn Alpha. Now Final Burn Alpha is set to this screen resolution. In this menu here, you could either do resume. If you don't have that option, then you do what you did to enter into this menu, which for me was hotkey button two. And as you can see, that is core provided Street Fighter. This is what it really was set to. And again, for me, I'm personally not a fan of the sidebars. I like my 16 by nine stretch. So as far as you could see with that, you could do that and you could also test it in the game. So again, we're gonna access our menu by holding, for me, it's shift and button two. So whatever your button combination was before, that's how you get into it, okay? We're gonna go back, we're gonna go to settings, input and again for me i'm sorry not input i'm sorry video and then aspect ratio i always leave it as 16 by 9 that's the best way to do it and then for here you have to save the concurrent configuration if you exit without saving and you reload the game it's going to go back to where it was before so be sure to hit save current configuration don't do anything else don't do save new you have to do save current configuration now we can exit out and now we're back into 16 by nine. So now real quick on this one, I'm gonna show you guys how to change from arcade sticks to the PlayStation controllers. The only time you would do this is if you don't wanna play as player one as the arcade sticks. Let's say you're playing a console game and you wanna play 
on an actual pad, this is the step that you would take. You have to be very careful with this step and basically I'll show you real quick. So we're gonna go into a track mode. Same thing as before, we're actually gonna go into RetroArch. And for me, I'm actually gonna turn on my PlayStation controller. Keep in mind for me and my Zinmo, we have these sets of players one and two, and then your PlayStation controllers are players three and four. Real quick, if you see the video before, I'm gonna change my aspect ratio for all my other games to 16 by nine, and I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna go back now, and again, this is the menu that we loaded up before. We're gonna go into settings, input, and we're gonna go to user player one, input user one binds. You have to be very careful with this step, okay? We're gonna go down, and as you can see right now, this is going to Zinmo Tech, which is the name of the encoder, and as you can see, you let the words go through and it shows you this is number one. Whatever you do, do not go left. Do not press left. If you press left, you are now stuck. You're gonna to need to whip out a keyboard, okay? If I wanna now use this PlayStation 3 controller, for example, we're gonna go right, and now it should say controller number two, which is here. And now that it loaded up as Zinmo controller number two, but joystick one now is disabled. You have to go now to player two and go right one more time. Once you do that, now I'm inside of my PlayStation controller. As you can see, it says PlayStation controller. And now I'm using the PlayStation controller as player one. So once you go right on player one, one time, this is now disabled, it's gone. It went to player two. Then you have to go to player two and set up the PlayStation controller. Once you have this set, we're gonna go circle, 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 configurations, save current configuration. We'll do that right now. And now we're basically gonna quit RetroArch. So now you could still use the arcade stick on the front end, that's its own separate kind of system. I'm gonna now basically go back into Game Boy, just because we've been using the Game Boy, and I'll load up the same game, Super Mario Land. So same rules apply, this is start, this is select. You could also go into RetroArch and change the menu. And as you can see right now, I could use either the left analog stick or the D-pad to play. So now you are playing a Game Boy game with your PlayStation controller. So again, joystick one is now disabled. So again, that is how you could basically go from arcade sticks to the PlayStation controller. So now once you're done, this is the only difficult thing when it comes to switching out these controllers is now the arcade sticks don't work. So for example, like my save and load state right now does not work. It, right now we are kind of stuck. So depending on the controller you use, um, this could apply really for all of my customers with the PlayStation controller. Um, basically again, if you remember, we had the hotkey inputs um, buttons change now. So like button 13 was my shift here on the PlayStation controller. Um, I'm not too sure exactly what the button number is, but I do know for a fact that if you want to exit this system now, you hold L1 and circle, and then you just exit it out. So keep that in mind. This is why it's like expert level, very difficult stuff to deal with is changing the controllers. That's why I really don't suggest changing the controllers, but if you did want to, now you know how. So again, once you're back on the front end, which is its own separate system, the arcade sticks work correctly and such. So I'm gonna go back now to my arcade menu and I'm gonna go back into RetroArch. I'm sorry, I'm gonna go to my attract mode settings menu and I'm gonna set this back to player one. So again, right now player one is disabled because the PlayStation controller is player one. So we're gonna go into settings using X. We're gonna go input. We're gonna go user one. And now I'm gonna go left. I'm now Zinmo number two. I'm gonna go left one more time. And now I'm back to the arcade stick. And there you have it. One, two, three, we are set. That's the only very difficult thing is that once you change that setting, this controller right here is disabled and it could get very tedious. The only thing I could possibly suggest to you is to be safe, always pick up a cheap USB keyboard in case you ever do get into that where you actually disable it, then we could get you out of that nightmare. Another way you could kind of do it, um, I never really played around with it like this, but you could kind of do it. Keep in mind of what your um, hotkey and your menu was. Uh, if I go back into, let's, let's just see, I don't know, a Super Nintendo game. 
Let's go into Super Nintendo. We'll load up, uh, I don't know, this. Basically, we're going to let this load, and I'm going to go back. Again, I'm using Player One joystick, okay? I'm going to go back into my menu, my RetroArch menu. And the thing that you could do is that you could go underneath this quick menu. You could set up the controls. Um, but I'm really not a fan of the way this is set. I would not play around with this, per se. I would go back, back one more time, settings, input, and then go in here and set up your user one and such. So again, there's a couple ways you could do it. Uh, you could do it either way. The quick menu will work. You go into controls. It's just right now, as you could see, like it's looking for device one. It's just kind of like, you know, now you're going ex expert level and I definitely don't suggest that you do it. Um, but at least you do have the option there. You could change your button configurations and such. But again, my controls are set accordingly. Again, be very careful this changing the joysticks and all that. It's very difficult and you could mess up something, but the worst case scenario, you do have the keyboard handy to fix that. Okay guys, so the next kind of tutorial real quick to go over is dip switch settings, how to access dip switches and such. So the only reason that you would ever do this is um, some games that are set to four player, for example, like NBA Jam, and I think I have like two on two hockey, um, they're set to four player. And if you ever wanted to change that and set it to two player, you could follow these steps. They do not work all the time for each game. Um, I just tried it with the Simpsons going from four player to two player. This kind of technique does not work. That's where you need a specific ROM. For example, I have the Simpsons four player ROM on mine. Um, the other reason that you could do dip switches though is that you could change difficulties. Um, you might even be able to enable some secret modes such as blood mode on Metal Slug. Um, or even really up the difficulty and such. So the real first one I did want to show you real quick was NBA Jam. Again, NBA Jam, I have it set to four players on this. So it's player one and two and the two PlayStation controllers. So the only thing that kind of stinks about that is that player one and two is on the same team. Um, so if you did want to play, let's say alone as one or two players, you didn't have four, you would have to go in and change this kind of menu. Uh, I obviously can't talk and search at the same time. So we're going to load up NBA Jam uh, Tournament Edition. Before anything, the first thing you do want to do is make sure that you have a keyboard handy. Um, I believe I set a, an arcade button layout for my customers, but it's always good to have a keyboard handy. For me, real quick, I'm just going to see what did I have it set to. Okay. So for me, on um, my arcade cabinets and my customers, if you do have an arcade cabinet, you basically press player one, button three and six at the same time. And you're gonna basically get this menu here. If you don't have this kind of setup, all you basically have to do is on a keyboard, you press tab. While you're here in all honesty, even with my customers here, um, you know, navigating with the joysticks might not work perfectly, but either way it will work. It's just sometimes we don't know what button is what uh, for example, on this, like button four is enter and button five is back. Okay. So the real first thing you want to do, um, as far as if you are a keyboard user is you kind of want to make sure your inputs are correct, or if you want know what the inputs are. So you should go into input general, even the UI is the most important one. And you want to find out if you even want to change from keyboard to your joysticks, you kind of want to figure out number one, let's see real quick, your configuration menu. That's what brought up that little menu here. So that's my button configuration or keyboard tab. You also wanna know what your select is, that's enter, and your UI cancel. So basically that's back. So once you have that set, and you can actually even go into player one controls and change other controls, but we're talking about dip switches. Once you're on this menu, you go into dip switch. And basically there's a couple of things here that you could look at. The main one for us is players. This right now is set to four players. You could set it to two players. If I set it to two players, right now it's not gonna be correct because we changed the, the controller. Actually, I'm in the game right now. So I have to actually reboot the system. So once you do save your settings, you do wanna kind of reload the game. That was set to four player. I should have started the video with it, but right now basically with us rebooting, the game will be set to two players. So. 
as you can see, I only have two people on the screen. That's two players. And a lot of people do like to play that one-on-one -on -one style with two people. So again, now if you wanted to change the game and bring it back to four players, on my cabinet here, it's player one, three, and six. One shot, all together, you load it up. If you didn't have that option, you grab your keyboard and you literally press tab. Once you go into there, again, we're gonna go into dip switches. And again, for here, we're gonna go players back to four players, okay? You're gonna go back, return the game, and I do suggest that you do exit. Once you do a reboot, which I'll show you real quick now, now we're gonna go back to four players. Again, for me, my controls are already set. You should be A-OK. -okay. But now, basically, we have four players now. So as you can see, it went from two players to four players. And that, honestly, is how you do, like, most of the sport games, a lot of people do want to do that. Um, next up, as far as dip switches, let's do, like, the Metal Slug mode. I did make a video on that. Some people, you know, they do like to watch the current videos. So let's check out, like, Metal Slug. Uh, Metal Slug is a two-player game, and um, basically we're going to enable blood mode. Um, so Metal Slug, you go into Metal Slug. And now again, depending on what emulator it is or what system it is, the, t the tab or my um, kind of button configuration I just did may not work. So as you can see, it's not working, and even tab is not working. This system is one of those systems that, um, and I'll show you real quick on RetroArch, is basically you have to hold down player one start. And basically on player one start, now you enable the dip switch mode. So real quick, before we even go farther, if none of those work, the tab and everything, and you want to know what the button combination is, you basically load up that quick menu from RetroArch. Take a look at earlier videos. You load up this menu here, right? You're gonna go into options. And we are going to find Diagnostic input. If it's set to none, you probably want to set it to hold start. Or you could even try that button combination, which is start A and B. I always have it set to start. So as you can see that diagnostic input is hold start. Now that you know that, and again, this is RetroArch menu, you can't do much on this menu. You're going to basically exit out of this menu. So you could go back and press resume or press the button combination that bought up that menu. Now that we know player one start, you can hold it down. And there's a couple things you could do here. Uh, the big thing I believe for mine was not that. Push player one button C to go back. It's the soft dip. Soft dip, slot one, metal slug. There's a couple of settings here. So we have difficulty menu. And the big thing here was the blood menu. So if you press button, whatever button it is, that's the hard thing. Whatever the button is, you gotta press it and now it changed it. You could also change the level difficulty and you could change how many people you start with, I guess. So I'm gonna leave this as button, as play at level four, so we don't mess up anything. And now it's like you gotta figure out what your button is. So it's saying like button C, which is button one on mine for some reason. And once you have it, you exit. Now it's back, you don't have to restart the mode. This right now should basically have the blood mode enabled. Yep. So you can literally see the color of it. Let's see real quick what it looks like if I disable it. So blood mode off. I'm gonna go back, gonna go back. I'm gonna exit. It's gonna reload the game on its own. Let's see what it looks like with blood mode off. I believe it's white or nothing splatters out of the person. So let's see. Yeah, there you go. So no blood mode. If you wanted to access it, you hold player one start, and then you go into soft dip, metal slug one, blood mode on, and you go back, you go back, and you exit. And that's it, okay? So there are a couple of different, different games have different type of dip switches. So I'm gonna show you the one that I did discover with The Simpsons. Um, the Simpsons, again, I have it set to four player. Um, let's go to The Simpsons. Basically the dip switch that you could change really, um, and I do notice that I do have a dip switch for four players to two players, but it didn't, it didn't take. Uh, I did the research on it, and again, for me, I know for a fact that I do have the Simpsons 4P ROM, so that's what I think is the issue. We're gonna go into it. The big thing though, at least with the Simpsons game, is um, you could change the difficulty on it. 
So same thing here, there's a couple ways you could test it. You could test what my man was. If you have a keyboard, it's tab. As you can see, tab is not working. You could try, like for my customers, you could try this. Didn't work. So you would result to the player one diagnostic one. Again, if you didn't know what it was, let me just exit out of this, just so somebody could see it. If you didn't know what it was, you load up your RetroArc menu, you go into options, and then diagnostic input. And there you have it, okay? So while you're in this menu, it's always a good thing to like let it load up. So it'll go through its screens. Awesome, now you can hold down. And there's a couple things here. So really you could do coin slash game options. And for example, like you have difficulty. See like my ROM is set to number of players two, but it's really a four player ROM. So this one, it just didn't take. For some reason it wouldn't take it, but you could at least change the difficulty on it if you did want to challenge. Uh, and there's a couple other things. I wouldn't change anything else besides that. And then once you're done, you literally go to exit and that's it, you call it a day. So that's a couple things as far as dip switches. The only thing that dip switches works are is arcade. Only reason you would do this is that you would go into arcade. You can change dip switches on a console such as the Super Nintendo and such, that wouldn't work. Let's load up one that I didn't even test at all. Let's load up uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. As again, my Ninja Turtles is usually set to four players. So let's just see what we could do as far as this. So we're gonna do the first one, not Turtles in Time. Again, me personally never did this before, so there's a couple ways you could try it. So again, usually let it load, let it go through its thing. This looks like a Konami game, so I could already tell it should be button one, player one start. No, actually it's not. It's none of those. My keyboard tab does not work, so let's just see real quick. So I just did all mine. Interesting, on this game specifically, our details are actually within RetroArc. So look at that, we have literally test mode. Test mode is off, but then we don't have to test. See, that's the thing, each game is different. Um, Difficulty, flip screen. I would not want to go into test mode. So as you can see on this game specifically, that's that's the options that we have. We can't even change the, the how many people there are. Same thing again with the Simpsons game. It's all based on what ROM is in it. So that's, I guess, another way you could do it. Let's just see real quick. Let me go, now that I see that, let me go into the Simpsons and just see what the options on that are. So the Simpsons, I didn't rehearse this one. <laughs> but again, this is like real life stuff. You would deal with this too if you're trying it. So let's see if we load up this retro arc menu. No, so this one at least gives us a diagnostic input. That was the dip switch. So as you can see, it depends on what game it is. That one, for example, as you can see, that's that. Um, let's do one more, uh, Sunset Riders. I don't think it's the Sunset Riders, no. I have Sunset Riders set to four players, so let's just see what that is. So as you can see right now, the most freaking one is um, NBA Jam, mostly the sport ones. Let's do one last one, and then we're gonna call it on this one. Mm -mm -mm. So Sunset Riders, right? Let's just see what we can get out of this. I thought Konami, I saw the, the loading screen. So you know what, before I even look dumb, let's just load up RetroArc. Let's go to options. So this one does have a dip switch. So hold player one to get into that switch, right? So even with tab, even with this, doesn't work. I'm gonna hold down player one, let the game load. And now we have this. So we have a couple things, we have game option. So players lives, extra life, difficulty level factory sound nothing here as far as how many players needs to play player one to shoot uh game mode nope i'm in the game <laughs> so let's try one more time for coin maybe free play no 
start, nothing. So as far as Sunset Riders, there's no way um, to get into a four player to two player that's all based on the ROM. So again, I have my game set to four players. Luckily with games like this, it's not that difficult to kind of just cycle through the um, keyboard and the joysticks. And there you have it. Like I said, not all games, you can't switch all the games. As you can see, I literally did it live with you guys. But we got some arcade action going on. And as you can see again, there you have it. Vic VP Game Case Arcades. That is kind of really expert level mode kind of stuff on that. Again, I don't suggest that you do this unless you do know what you're doing. And worst case scenario, you should always have a keyboard handy.